Hello, everybody. Welcome to World Ca Word Camp. Okay. It's been a long time in the mix, six months of planning, so I'm glad the day is finally here. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming today. Uh, without you guys and the community support, we couldn't actually have an event like this. Uh, we'd confirmed 330 people for today, so that's quite a record. Uh, WordCamp Cape Town has really taken off this year. Last year was the first time I organized it. Back in 2008 was the first WordCamp. Uh, yeah, I, th I think that um, this year is definitely one up on last year. Uh, it's, it's been a great experience organizing it. I've learned a lot and met some wonderful people in the process. Uh, I'd like to just thank the, all of our sponsors, actually. Without our sponsors, it wouldn't be possible to actually have an event like this. I uh, specifically want to thank some of our platinum sponsors. Uh, my company Lightspeed has been quite involved in the whole process from day one. My team has supported me the whole way through. Specifically, my wife has been wonderful, so thank you very much to Barbara. Uh, yeah, uh, Price Check, they came on board back in June. Uh, really great to have support so, so early on in the organizing phase. Uh, these guys, yeah, thanks a lot. Really great. Uh, RSA Web were involved in the event last year, and they helped us with sponsorship and also internet. This year, they've one-upped, and they've helped us with more sponsorship, internet, and all sorts of goodies. So thanks a lot to RSA Web. Clickatel have joined us, and uh, it's been really great working with uh, their marketing team. They've been super helpful, and uh, one thing I'd like to say is they've provided us with name tags. So I'd like to encourage that everyone use the name tags, write your name on. If you want to gain access to the gardens at all uh, during lunch break or tea break, you're going to need to wear the name badge, primarily as an identifier that you're at this conference, and you can get in for free. Uh, FMB with PayPal and Elance came on board and they, they basically have paid for our lunch as well as sponsored us in other ways. So yeah, you guys are going to be eating well today. Uh, Imagination, thanks guys for all your help on the social media and your support with sponsorship money. It's been great to have you on board. Uh, and I'd like to give a special thanks to the Inkfish Design Studio team. Without them, we wouldn't have been able to actually have such a professional, polished uh, image. The logos, the social media designs, everything. It's been great. Really, I, I couldn't have done it without them. I phoned them up so many times. Oh, please, just one more design, one more something. And they, they just provided. It was great. Uh, lastly, I'd like to thank the volunteers. Uh, they're the ones with the bright blue t-shirts. You can see some t-shirts over there. And uh, they, they've helped us with organizing, with social media. We're going to have some of the speakers and some of the um, kind of expert guys. Uh, they're going to be at the happiness table over there uh, later today. And uh, I think if anyone has any questions about WordPress or anything like that, go to the table during lunchtime and have a seat and, yeah, ask your questions. Cool. So, uh, it's, as I said, it's been quite an adventure organizing this event. Uh, it's, it's really a lot of work to do this on my own. Uh, I have had the help of my team, but primarily it's me organizing this event. What I'd like to do is plant a seed. Um, we, we need more help with this sort of an event. It's a community-driven event, and uh, I'd like to propose that we start a WordCamp organization board. And we elect an, a number of people who will get involved in different aspects from sponsorship to volunteering to various things. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what I have to say about that. Uh, unfortunately, David Mugo won't be joining us uh, from Kenya. Uh, he had to cancel at the last minute. So that, that's a bit unfortunate. Okay, I'm going to now move over to setting up Eric Clements. He's going to be on in a moment. We're just going to get his slides ready. Thank you.
Okay, guys, this is uh, Eric Clements, and uh, he's going to be telling us about um, open source Mixit apps. Uh, I'm going to hand over to you. Thanks, Ashley. Can everybody hear me? Testing. I think, firstly, a big thanks to Ashley for organizing today. I think just looking from the, the audience up here, it's, it's um, going to be quite a successful event. So thanks, Ashley. Um, before I start, I think because it's the first talk of the day, I, I mean, I'm quite interested. Um, I was wondering how many people here have actually WordPress. OK, that's very good. How many people have used WordPress to um, create a blog? How many people have used WordPress to create a company website? Very good. How many people have used WordPress to create something other than a website? OK, that's quite interesting. There's a whole couple of hands. Um, at the end of the talk, I'd like to get to actually asking one or two of you what you actually used it for. But um, let's get started. So our talk today is about uh, a case study, actually. A case study of a service that we created on Mixit called SA Gold. It was just a little pilot of a service that we wanted to run for the Olympics. And um, it really started from, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story behind it. A few friends were sitting at a pizza shop in Greenside. I'm actually from Joburg. And we were talking about Cameron van der Berg and uh, the gold medal he won. And we were watching a lot of the Olympics happening on the TV in the restaurant. And we realized, but all of the Olympics that's happening, and I don't know if you guys remember the vibe that was going on, the swimming, we're really winning a lot of medals. a big vibe going on. And every time something happened, uh, 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 a lot of noise would happen, but typically on Twitter, on um, people who's got satellite TV at work or at home. And our big question was, but is everybody in South Africa talking about what's happening? All right? How do people, ordinary people who don't have satellite TV, get to know about what's happening in real time? Not waiting for SABC or, or public TV in the evening to hear what happened. So we, we, are, we said, OK, we want to do something about this. We want to get the news of what's happening out to ordinary people. And the big question was, but how are we going to do this? So this is how we got to it. We, we had one friend, a journalist, who said, OK, but I know how to use WordPress. I know how to write for blogs. I've been on trips for newspapers, writing about news on WordPress. Then we had our techie ninja guy, um, who knows how to develop in WordPress and other technologies. We had myself, who's worked on Mixit for the last two years. And we said, OK, how can we combine all our experiences to achieve our goal of getting news about Team South Africa at the Olympics out to ordinary people? And that's where we said, but can't we use this little Mixpress tool that we created, combine the journalist, and create a little digital magazine on Mixit about this topic? Because we'd created Mixpress as innovation, as research, as an open source plugin to get community-based organizations, NPOs, NGOs, et cetera, onto Mixit. But we hadn't actually used this for anything. So we found our first application of, of this tool. So what Mixpress allowed us to do is to combine all the technology, like I said, and create this little service on Mixit. And this is actually what it looked like at the end of the day on a smartphone. But when you think about the actual Mixit audience, 90% of them, or actually 98% of them, are on feature phones. So it'll look much smaller. But I use the example of a smartphone just so that you guys can see it a little bit bigger. I don't know if you guys can read what's here. It looks a little bit small. I just want to take a second and explain quickly what, um, what actual information was on the app. Do you guys want me to just quickly run through this? Yeah. Sure. Great. So in the little app, it, it, you'll see everything is text-based. 
mostly on Mixit. There's a couple of services with images, but users are very bandwidth aware. So you don't throw a lot of images at them because they, they um, don't like services where they have to pay for too much bandwidth. So the app that you're seeing here with latest news, who's going for gold today, SA medal winners, current medal rankings, and it'll link to our Plank Alliance. This is all out of components from WordPress. So the latest news, very simply, you guys know this better than me, category with posts. Um, anybody, anybody making a post into the latest news category will show in the app under latest news. The same with who's going for gold. Every morning, the journalist would log in and say, and go check the schedule, see which South African is participating, and we just post a little story about who's doing what at what time, so that people would know either to check the TV or the radio to hear what's going on. And then SA Medal Rankings was a WordPress page. So if you wanted to update the Medal Ranking in the Mixit app, all you needed to do was go update the Medal Ranking page in WordPress. And the same for the rest of the content on, on the app. And then something else, lastly, about what the app looked like, this back and menu button. Seems very simple, but it, it's, a very, it's a core aspect of Mixit. Users have a certain learned behavior of how they navigate services on Mixit. And they learn that through services like TradePost on Mixit, that all Mixit users have. And it's very linear, one, two, three, four, five, up to 10 <coughs> menu items. And at the bottom, you have a back-end menu button. Another important question is, who here has actually used Mixit before? OK, that's great. That's actually a big number. So you guys know what I'm talking about. So what the WordPress plugin does is create this navigation for you and present the information in a way that the Mixit user is used to. Instead of presenting it in a way that WordPress would normally on a web, you have to reformat things in a layout that they are used to. Before I move on, is there any questions about what the service actually looked like? Cool. OK, so here's some numbers. So the big question probably is, OK, but what happened with this little pilot that you guys did? So these are the numbers. It took us, I mean, uh, everybody knows, five minutes to install WordPress, to install WordPress and this plugin, six minutes. To get your app registered on Mixit takes an hour. Not hours worth of work, but you have to wait an hour for the service to be activated and to point to the URL of your WordPress site. It's very simple to register a service on Mixit these days. You create your account on code.mixit.com. You create a new, what they call, Mobi portal, and it just simply asks you for a URL. Now, typically, this would be a URL to a system you might have, hard, uh, might have custom coded uh, or HTML that you've created. But in this case, it's the URL of uh, your WordPress instance. And then the time it took us to set up our first categories, the news category, medal rankings, and all of those things, took three to four hours. So within four hours, we had created what was basically a little digital magazine. And then over the next two weeks, we got about 10,000 people following the news we were posting on the service with very little advertising. We just put a couple of links on our existing Mixit services and sent out one broadcast to our existing users saying, come check out this new service. <coughs> so that brings us to where are we now? At first, we needed to combine the developers, the technology guys, and the journalists, and the bloggers, or the media people to get something on to mix it. But now, having created the, or used the plugin, you no longer need all of that technology skill to create a service on Mixit. You can just combine either the blogger, maybe a marketing manager at a brand, and they can directly edit their presence on Mixit through WordPress. One of our other case studies is one of the large financial institutions is using this technology. So their digital marketing team 
is updating their presence, their information, their latest campaigns and promotions um, for their mix of presence through WordPress. And it's interesting to see every time that I walk into a brand and I tell them you can now manage your, word, your mix of presence through WordPress, I just see light bulbs going on in the marketing heads, or well, the heads of the marketing heads. Because they know that the people, the, the young people, not so young people, the people coming into their teams have WordPress experience, whether it was from blogging, whether it was from another organization. That is one of the key reasons why we decided to focus on WordPress or not, and not some of the other content management systems out there. Just very quickly, why, why we chose WordPress. I think the, the main reasons was all the NGOs, NPOs we saw that had existing content on WordPress. And then as well, like I said, the marketing managers that has a lot of experience using WordPress. And it was also the quick time to um, deployment. And then the reasons that you guys might ask why Mixit. Um, who here thinks that Mixit is just for pedophiles? <laughs> okay, I think that myth's been busted. Um, I think Eleanor Craig and the new ownership of Mixit has done a lot of effort in, in changing the brand and addressing all those kind of concerns. So Mixit is not just for pedophiles, not, not for pedophiles at all, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Mixit is really the channel that you're going to get to the masses of South Africans. The numbers are there. If you want details of these numbers or want to understand why Mixit is still there and want to see proof that the numbers are still there, um, come talk to me, email me, get a hold of me. I can show you some numbers. I've got some slides in the appendix that you guys can also have a look at. Mixit has actually been growing in the last two years. A lot of people have asked the questions, uh, what about Facebook, what about WhatsApp, what about smartphones? I'm not going to go into the detail of that because that's a, a whole two hour separate talk. But just to know that Mixit is still there, the numbers show growth in the last two years in new acquisitions per day. And um, that's one of the reasons why we chose it. Um, in our other Mixit services, um, we see up to 60,000 unique users visiting um, our most popular services. And across five services, we have about 600 to 700,000 registered users um, on Mixit. So the numbers are definitely there. And if you've got content on WordPress that you think is suited to ordinary South Africans and you want to increase your traffic, maybe this is something that you should be considering or looking into. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is um, it's really easy to monetize on Mixit. We find it really difficult to try and monetize um, our services on Facebook. We've got a, we're starting a, a big following on a new Facebook service we launched. Um, but monetizing is so much more difficult than on the Mixit um, platform. There's an open billing API, REST API, for the technical guys. And um, once you've registered your app and you know how to call a REST service, um, you can immediately start billing. And what we've seen is between 8 to 12 percent of users on Mixit have moolah or are willing to spend their moolah. So if you've got a really good service on Mixit and people are willing to spend for it, um, we see between that 8 to 12 percent of people actually spending their moolah. Um, some of the services, to give you an example, we charge between 25 cents to 99 cents for a, a quiz or a cute message or a piece of content. You might say, okay, well, that's very little. And you've also got to remember there's revenue share involved. So you only see between 32 to 35 percent of um, that actual money that the user spent because of operator fees. Uh, and a whole complex model between the operators and Mixit. Um, but you've got to look at the volume numbers. Yes, 10 cents or 20 cents is very little when you're dealing with 100 or 1,000 users. But when you're starting to deal with half a million to 2 million users on your service alone, those numbers start to scale. And then, I'm not going to bore you guys too much with Mixpress. It's, today is not really about Mixpress. It's more about WordPress and what you can do with WordPress. But some of the inter interesting things we've done is integrate this plugin, of course, with Google Analytics as well. Anybody running a, a service on, uh, with this on Mixit with WordPress want to know how many users are using it? 
So we've done that, and we've focused on configuration of how your service looks like. So we've used the standard WordPress custom configuration page and allowed users through WordPress to customize how this, their service will look like. And those are the things we're looking at going forward. And this is really what I wanted to get to. This is really the, the, the key part of this presentation. I don't know if we can get a mic, microphone ready, maybe. I want to just spend two minutes, if it's okay, Ashley, um, talking about this. So I've explained to you what we've done with WordPress. Um, it's really something a little bit different. We have to think it's, it's not a website, it's not a blog. We've used WordPress um, in the mobile space. Uh, almost as a content management system for a mobile service. If you think about this, is, is there anything that anybody, um, ideas that people have, or things that you're wanting to, wanting to do in WordPress that's not a website or a, a blog? Is there anybody that's got ideas or things they've done that they want to share? I saw some hands. Do we have a mic? Thanks, Ashley. Hi, my name's Sean from Slingshot. Um, I just think something like this would lend itself very well to, let's take the issue of crime in South Africa, for example. Um, community policing, community reporting, um, you know, neighborhood watch, that kind of thing. Um, it seems to me if most South Africans don't have access to a smartphone, then something which is SMS or text-based would be very effective if you could kind of collate all of the information in a hotspot as something happens, to get people there really fast and quickly. Thanks. Thanks. Did everybody hear that? So the idea there was mostly around, if I understand correctly, about community policing and using it. So it's almost like crowdsourcing information, user-generated content. And I, I, that's, that's where we, we really are. All the services we're creating right now is, is similar to what the gentleman was saying. It's all about what the user um, is providing, it's user-generated content. Everybody knows that static content information, where you all know that, um, is dead. It's all about the next generation of services, interactive services. And mobile is moving there as well. So people don't want to go browse a mobile site with static information about what happened at the PSL game this weekend. They want to interact. They want to comment on what happened at the game. They want to play a game about what happened at the game. They want to do a quiz about um, their favorite team. They want to compete between the clan of supporters of uh, Kaiser Chiefs and Pirates. Um, it's all about interactivity. Maybe just one more. Is there any more comments or any ideas? I think I saw some more hands of people are doing things that's not websites on WordPress. I think there's one. Hi, my name's, uh, my name's Jeff. Um, Got more of a technical question, I don't know if you can answer it, but to interact with WordPress, um, one of the ways that I've used it is the XML RPC protocol. Is that what you guys are using? Because that's gonna become pretty standard from the next version of WordPress. I was wondering if you had any thoughts. Okay, so the question was, are we using XML RPC to interface between Mixit and WordPress? Is that correct? So uh, we're actually not using that. Um, Mixit has two APIs. The one was the original C Sharp API. It was very Windows bound and very closed. And you had to code in C Sharp.net to integrate with Mixit. Um, then this was actually done on the second Mixit API that launched in April this year, which is uh, HTML, XHTML API. Basically, and, and, that, and, and that's very important. I'm glad you asked that. One very important point is to not confuse that screen you saw that Mixit service with a Mobi site or a website. So Mixit has an HTML interface, but you, you can even have a static HTML page with hello world in HTML, and um, you point Mixit at that URL, and it'll show that. But Mixit's client on your phone is actually not a web browser, if that makes any sense. Mixit's client actually displays something called Mixit markup, a custom markup that Mixit created. For example, to make something bold, you put an asterisk before and after a word. But in HTML, you put a bold tag before and after, or style sheet tags. 
What Mixit is doing is transcoding all the HTML that you're providing to them into Mixit markup on the server side. And then they present the Mixit markup to the user. So the, the short answer to your question is no, we're not using that. I'm also not a technical expert with the actual code layer, but um, the actual integration layer is HTML. But it's very important to realize that you're not actually showing a, a web page. And do you have developer docs and stuff for your APIs? Um, for uh, the Mixpress plugin or? For the, the plugin and yep. for building our own stuff. Okay, so there's two areas. So actually building things directly into Mixit. Um, you can just go to devdev.mixit.com and um, just go to documentation and all the docs of the Mobi API, the HTML interface is there, as well as all the REST documentation. So the, the HTML Mobi interface is one section. And then if you want information about a customer or you want to do funky things like bill, you call the REST API. Cool, and then our Mixpress plugin details are available at, at mxpress.coza or on wordpress.org, WordPress just search for Mixit and it'll come up. Cool. Okay, and then just to wrap up, I'm pretty sure we're actually not too, too bad over time. And um, maybe just one or two last questions, if there are any. The question here. We'll just take one more question after that. Hi, I'm Rian. Hi. I've got a question regarding the XHTML that Jeff just asked about. Um, the new kind of standards that's coming out, it's HTML5 and all the bunch of new tags yeah. that that's bringing with it. And also the CSS fee stuff. You just mentioned that it's, it's transcoding. Yeah. And how does that play with styles? And how does the new HTML5 tags come into play with um, Mixit's API? Okay, that's a very good question. Did everybody hear it? So the, the question is really HTML5, where, where, one, where is Mixit going and, and where is Mixpress going in, in terms of that? So I would almost have Mixit answer that if they were here, but I can tell you what they said two weeks ago at a conference when the same question was asked. So Mixit has always been focusing on feature phones that don't have HTML5, don't have vector graphics, don't have animation, video, etc. But they have realized that they were a very internal focused organization. They didn't listen to anybody else. But because of things that are happening, they are now starting to listen more to people like you that are asking these questions. So they haven't given any dates. They haven't given a specific roadmap. But I hear rumors of a new client coming out. So any of those fancy things that's more HTML5 based will be potentially a new future client. We're at Mixit, Mixit version six right now in terms of a client for your phone. Um, because of this transcoding layer, you can't do more than bold, italics, color, font, and images below 64K. Okay, that's all you can do. The big question is, what is gonna happen with this going forward? Is Mixit gonna release a client with uh, HTML5 capability, are they going to expose native device capability through their own API? Or are they going to have their own markup or a standard markup? Unfortunately, all of those are currently questions. But if you follow the, there's a contact form on Mixpress. If you register there, we'll send out updates of anything we hear about changes that's happening in the Mixit space. Okay. Ashley, I think out of time? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody.